we knew that he was on a, a location. We knew he decided to go to California. And he would call occasionally to say how things were going. And he usually would call in and say, I haven't found the family. And of course, we would be worried because this was our next job. And it took him a couple of months. So we were waiting, waiting, waiting. And then one day the call came, get yourself to the Chelsea next week. That's it. And all of a sudden, you know, it was rearrange your life and go. And we went to the Chelsea, met Lance, met Pat. And when we met Pat, we were filming. We didn't say, hello, Pat, how are you? I'm Susan Allen. We just started shooting. We just started. The minute she hit her foot out of the cab, we started rolling. Well, to, just to backtrack for a second, the family obviously lived in Santa Barbara. Right. But the oldest son, Lance, had moved to New York City about a year earlier, uh, was currently uh, living in the Chelsea Hotel. Pat, I think, said to Craig, you know, after the family agreed to be the subjects of the documentary, that she was planning to visit Lance as part of a, also a little bit of a bit, combining with a little bit of a business trip for her husband, Bill. And uh, so therefore, even though the majority of the series takes place in California and Santa Barbara, the actual first filming on the series took place in New York City, which was Pat's one week visit to meet with Lance, which uh, is episode two of the series, if you're familiar with it, self-contained episode, and uh, became a kind of, um, cause celebra because that's the big sort of gay episode of the series where mom comes to New York and finds her son, you know, living in this um, sort of um, culturally strange environment, certainly for uh, as, uh, anyone. As one writer once said, it was Chelsea Girls meets Weissman. <laughs> and uh, I like that description uh, because Lance was living his fantasy life of being in the Chelsea Hotel making the Warhol Ch Chelsea Girls. And Pat, this, you know, who was this, you know, suburban mom, hit the, hit, you know, went to the Chelsea Hotel and her entrance into the doorway of the Chelsea Hotel was a camera crew following her. And, and we didn't talk to her. We, we actually introduced ourselves in the elevator, you know, because that's an awkward Riding moment. Riding up in the elevator. We said, hello. We're, and then as soon as the door opened from the elevator, because she was going to go see Lance, camera went back on the shoulder and we started shooting again. And we stopped talking again. And, we just, and then that scene unfolds where you go, oh, mom, you know, and he comes in the door. And that, that, that's like second row of, of footage. And we just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And obviously Lance planned a week. And it was, you know, it was a busy, busy week. I, I think for historical perspective, we should say that the 19, year 1971, homosexuality or being gay or lesbian was not a... Uh, uh, widely uh, accepted as, as as it is presumably today by the majority of I believe most polls show people accept gay people now. I think it was still listed by the American Psychiatric Association as a mental illness, and uh, certainly and for probably uh, the purposes of this tape, one of the more important issues is there were no g real gay people on television. I mean, you may have had some. Uh, gay comedians who appeared occasionally, mm -hmm. but were not necessarily outed, you know, uh, but just appeared as sort of, you know, kind of eccentric people. Uh, I believe, and, you know, I, I, not that many people have challenged the claim that Lance was really the first openly gay, real life person to appear on American television in any, uh, in any uh, serious way. So he was really the, sh you know, the divorce was another issue, but. He was, you know, the other p part of the series that made it so very controversial. Uh, and the fact that Lance himself was such a wonderful, charming, funny, ebullient, full of life person, uh, maybe not the best uh, model of, uh, for a gay lib group, but nonetheless, he was, he, was, he was out there. And, you know, we like to think in terms of him not just as a gay person, I think that's a mistake anyway, just to simply label someone uh, by their sexuality, but also that when the series aired, you know, I can't tell you how many people have said to us, I was this 14-year-old kid, boy or girl, watched the series, I felt out of place in my town, uh, you know, I wasn't part of the mainstream high school culture, and somehow when I saw Lance, you know, it opened up the idea that there, were an there was another path one could take in life, and uh, I think, you know, to that extent, 
he was a cultural lightning rod. I think that when people, I like to make the joke, it's sort of like seeing Elvis in the 50s, you know, uh, singing rock and roll for the first time on uh, commercial television. He, he was shocking to a lot of people, but at the same time, he was fascinating. And I think that uh, perhaps next to Pat, you know, was the strongest character in the series. Craig didn't meet Lance until a few minutes before we did. Mm. So all of this was really unfolding very, very I remember fast. Craig went up to the room mm -hmm. to tell him that, because we did do some filming with Lance before Pat arrived, and uh, Craig went up to the room and he came down to the lobby and, uh, you know, he said, oh, it's okay, you know, you could go up. And, and I remember asking, I said to Craig, well, you know, what's he like? And he went, you know, like... I don't know what that really meant, but it uh, meant something, obviously. And uh, and then we went upstairs, and we opened the door, and we were rolling. There was no hello, hello, Lance, we're here, this is us. We just opened the door, and we were rolling. And there was that group of people that he had, he had deliberately assembled Hollywood for this line, moment, right? right? And I just said, wow, this is going to be fun. This is just going to be fun.